But every night, Doctor, when he gets dark and the stars come out, I'll look up. On her behalf, I'll look up at the sky and think of you. Thank you. Regular viewers of my channel will know that myself and my good friend and fellow Doctor Who fan Luke have had a number of in-depth discussions about the two Doctor Who movies from the 1960s that starred Peter Cushing in the title role. But did you know that at one point a third Doctor Who movie was planned? With John Pertwee, Hugh Grant, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee all set to appear, this was meant to be Doctor Who's greatest adventure. But why are we only just recently finding out about this now? Well, let's take a look. Doctor Who and the Daleks, released in 1965, and Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD, released in 1966, had been rainy bank holiday classics for decades. The movies were made by a small independent film company called Amicus Productions, who usually specialised in portmanteau horror movies such as Doctor Terror's House of Horrors. This version of our beloved Time Lord wasn't actually an alien from the planet Gallifrey, but rather an eccentric human inventor who is actually called Doctor Who. And it turns out that he's just finished building a time and space machine in his back garden that just so happens to look like a police telephone box. Well, everyone needs a hobby. Across these two films, the Doctor, along with his family, and usually at least one unintentional traveller, find themselves battling against those evil, notarised dustbins, the Daleks, with the first film taking place on their home planet of Scaro, and the second film seeing them invade the very streets of London itself. Fast forward to the year 2022, and both films received a glorious HD restoration on Blu-ray, along with a return to cinemas for the first time in nearly 60 years as a double bill showing. But at a preview screening at the British Film Institute, something even more surprising was revealed. The movies were originally produced by Milton Sabotsky, an American film and television writer and producer, who had formed Amicus Productions in 1964 alongside his friend and business partner Max J. Rosenberg. Sabotsky continued to produce movies well into the 1990s before he passed away at the age of 69. At the screening, Milton's two sons, Sergei and Dmitri Sabotsky, took to the stage and brought with them a document that even the most informed Doctor Who fan thought had been lost forever or simply hadn't existed at all. The script of their father's unmade third Doctor Who feature film with the title of Doctor Who's Greatest Adventure. Milton's archives have been in storage for a number of years and his widow, Dr Fiona Sabotsky, herself a prominent London psychiatrist and a historian of psychiatry, had until recently been the main point of contact for all inquiries regarding her late husband's archives. But no one had thought to ask her about this particular project. Rumours of a third movie had been going around for a number of years, and that either parts of it or all of it had been filmed, but then the reels were destroyed in a studio fire. There were indeed plans for a third film, but these were abandoned following the poor box office reception of Dalek's Invasion of 2150 AD. The film was originally thought to have been an adaptation of The Chase, which was the third Dalek story from the television series. It would make sense, seeing as the first film, Doctor Who and the Daleks, was an adaptation of the first television serial to feature the evil Silver Pepper Pots in the serial that was entitled simply as The Daleks, whilst the second film, Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD, was an adaptation of the second Dalek serial entitled The Daleks Invasion of Earth. However, it was later revealed that these rumours of this third movie were indeed false. However, 
For this third film that the Sabotskis revealed, the Daleks are actually nowhere to be seen. Instead, in what sounds like something that Garth Marenghi would write, a pair of different Doctors from different moments in time team up and are pitted against a swarm of giant, man-eating crabs that emerge from the sea. When this army of killer crustaceans attack a local army base, the Doctors offer their help. Imagine the scene. A battered police telephone box suddenly appears out of thin air in the middle of a lonely beach. The doors open and out strides the Doctor. But not a version of the Time Lord we've ever seen before. This incarnation is a much younger one than what we've seen on film or television before. This version of the Doctor is played by none other than Hugh Grant, a relative unknown actor at the time, as this would have been a number of years before he would shoot to superstardom with the release of the film Four Weddings and a Funeral in 1994. After hearing a woman's blood-curdling scream, he rushes off to find her, but only finds her body reduced to bloody pieces. Then another shock soon comes, as a second TARDIS appears on the beach, and out steps a more familiar figure, a dandyish man of action with a wild crop of white hair. He is the third Doctor, as portrayed by John Pertwee. The two Doctors stare at each other, bewildered, before asking each other the same thing in unison. Who are you? After attacking the army base, these serial killing shellfish invade a farm where the inhabitants fight back with burning bales of straw. In an attempt to stop them, the army attempt to lure the killer crabs across a minefield. While the older of the two Doctors rides an army truck, blasting the cutthroat creatures with ultrasonic beams, the younger Doctor descends to the main nest of the mass murdering mollusks, where he dispatches the King Crab with a harpoon. The cover of the document reveals that the script for the story was originally written by Edward and Valerie Abraham, a husband and wife writing team who wrote a number of Sabotsky's portmanteau horror films, including his final one, The Monster Club, in 1981. But the Abrahams were not hired to write a Doctor Who movie. Instead, The Time Lords was Sabotsky's later addition to a project that he started at the end of the 1970s, an adaptation of a pulp horror novel, very much like the kind that Garth Marenghi would write, that became notorious in the school playgrounds of Great Britain. Night of the Crabs by Guy N. Smith was a series of crabs books that did for crustaceans what James Herbert did for rats. The poster shows John Pertwee and Hugh Grant, with guest stars Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Quite whether the intention was for the film and television doctors to meet each other, or if Cushing was to play a different role in the film, remains to be seen. But that would have been rather interesting, wouldn't it? Not only would the Doctor be meeting a future version of himself, but a version of himself that was actually human? Hmm. And what of Christopher Lee? Well, there doesn't seem to be a mention of him in the script, but don't you think that he would have made a marvellous master? Of course, it's entirely possible that this poster was just made up as a mock-up to see what the film would be like. After all, mock-ups were made of this alleged third Dalek film as well. And that also had Christopher Lee's name on the poster as well. In the end, none of this was ever to be. John Pertwee would remain as the Doctor throughout his tenure from 1970 to 1974, before regenerating into Tom Baker. Although Pertwee's version would pop up again from time to time for a number of years. And as for Hugh Grant, well, he did actually become Doctor Who himself at some point, in the comic relief special Doctor Who The Curse of Fatal Death, which was not only a homage to the old show, but also a playful parody of it. The special would feature an all-star cast, including several actors who would end up playing the Doctor, due to him accidentally regenerating a number of times. Even today, Grant's name still comes up whenever casting begins for a new lead to play the Doctor. Whatever would have happened, Doctor Who's greatest adventure can be looked on as a fascinating curio, and it's something that will hopefully see the light of day as either a novel, script book, or big Finnish audio drama in years to come. You never know, Hugh Grant might get the chance to be the Doctor again after all. What do you think of this idea? Is this a Doctor Who film that you would have been interested in watching? Or do you think the idea of two versions of the Doctor fighting off giant crabs is going too far, and that Amicus should have stuck to having the Daleks around for a third time? Either way, be sure to leave your comments below. 
and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please do leave a like and be sure to check out some of my other videos. Please also consider sharing this video across your social media platforms, in particular with those that have got anything to do with classic Doctor Who and horror movies in general. And do be sure to subscribe to the channel as well to see future videos just like this. But for now, thank you very much for stopping by the Big Daddy D Reviews channel and we'll catch you again next time.